but I'm more excited to text than I am to work out. And I, I guess I, in listening to you, it sounds like it's an addictive behavior, just like eating candy or, or biting your nails or doing something else. Is this, do you see it as an addictive behavior, texting? Well, of course. And, and by the way, addictions are adaptive behaviors. They become maladaptive. What is that? So when you first started biting your nails because something was happening, it's, it gave you something to do, but it actually gave you a sensation uh, of accomplishment as you bit through the nail. And then as you get older, that biting of the nails becomes your soothing mechanism. Some people twirl their hair. I touch my eyebrow. I mean, everyone has their little tells that they go to when they're anxious. Poker players look for them. And so the, the, the habits that we develop, if they're acceptable socially, like work, right? Workaholism is an addiction, but it's socially accepted. So people look the other way. For much of the history of medicine, taking narcotics was actually an acceptable vice. You know, you would do drugs, it would get you through a very difficult day, you get up next morning and go to work. You could do it. Alcoholism, socially acceptable if you don't hurt other people, at least it used to be. And now we've begun to realize more and more that even if it's socially acceptable, it's not permissible. Texting, when done in the right setting, is perfectly fine. When the wrong setting, it's, it's not okay. And that's really difficult because those kinds of, of behaviors, which are sometimes okay and sometimes not, are incongruent for the brain. Where cigarette smoking, it's always bad for you. There's no time when it's good for you. Eating, sometimes it's good for you when it's done appropriately, sometimes it's not. That's why obesity is the single biggest scourge we have in this country. 